Welcome to I'm Aware That I'm Rare, the PH Aware podcast. My name is Steve Van Warmer, president and co-founder of PH Aware Global Association. Welcome to our 250th episode of the PH Aware podcast. So today we've got a very special conversation lined up for our 250th episode. I'll be joined by one of our fellow co-founders here at PH Aware, Marie Rand, and an award-winning director and producer, Elizabeth White. And we're going to talk about a special project we've been working on for quite a while here at PH Aware a live action short film project that's going to take pulmonary hypertension awareness to another level. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Elizabeth and Marie. Hi, I'm Marie Rand, and I am the managing director and co-founder with Steve Van Wormer and John Hess of PH Aware Global Association. And I am the mother of a PH patient who was the first person to undergo major heart surgery using the first drug in clinical trials in 1994. Her name is Chloe. And i spend my time helping raise awareness and working with Steve and John to develop technology for pulmonary hypertension. Um, sadly, we lost Chloe in 2006, and we work together at PH Aware in effort to do projects that are out of box and differently oriented so that we can raise awareness in innovative ways. This podcast today is about one particular project that we are working on. And Elizabeth? Hi, my name is Elizabeth White, and I am a film director and producer. I've been living in Los Angeles seven years now. I love working with organizations. I've worked with international charities such as Ronald McDonald House and Amnesty International. And now I love working with you guys. I think PH Aware Organization is just something amazing. One of the very first things we did as an organization when we uh, formed five years plus ago was to uh, put a proposal in to do innovative things, one of which was to do a film of some sorts, whether it was a documentary, a short film beyond, say, a PSA. With that, we at PH Aware discussed many options and directions that we could take with this potential film project. And we ultimately landed upon doing a piece that was not documentary, but was fictional, allowing us the ability to develop characters and the multiple sides of the human condition in regard to somebody who has a disease. And I think that we achieved this really beautifully with this piece because we are able to show the outward facing side of a patient or a person with a disease and the inner side of them and how they're feeling, which is often very different than what they're portraying to the world. And we find this an important thing to show. We are giving our patients a piece that they can share with other people that enables them to speak about who they are and what they're feeling. And I have found with this piece that it's very alarming to people at first to really see a vision of what a patient is feeling like inside. And it's the first time I've seen people really react to what they believe the patient is feeling. The closest someone who doesn't have the disease has come to saying, oh, I think I get that. When you guys came to me to direct and produce this film, I honestly didn't even know what pH was and what people that have pH, what they're going through. And for me as a director and to see and feel these visions, it was very surprising and heartbreaking and you know we took a diverse group of PH teenagers they come together and you know we see their journey through friendship and self-discovery and what these teenagers what these young people are going through first of all through their teenage years and second fighting this disease this actually secret disease because when you you know when you have PH you don't really see it and I think we did an amazing job when people with pH and just ordinary people watch this, we can approach awareness and especially what they're going through, these these teenagers. As I said, my daughter, Chloe, passed away from pulmonary hypertension in 2006. And I have four other children, Liv, Zach, Ava, and Elijah, who are all very committed to the pulmonary hypertension community. They have a deep love and great compassion for people who are ill. And when we were talking to Elizabeth about casting the production, 
My son, Zach, happens to be an actor uh, who started on Broadway when he was nine years old and has done TV and film. And he became a part of the production for multiple reasons. One is because he is very well immersed with the pulmonary hypertension community. He also wanted to honor Chloe and be part of the filming and production so that we could be certain that we had the emotion of um, pulmonary hypertension patients. In addition to that, my daughter, Ava, joined in and she is going to college for sound engineering and design. And she was on location, also working behind the scenes, thanks to Elizabeth, learning with an amazing sound technician. My other kids were there as well, some playing extras. And it was uh, really wonderful for us as a family to be so involved in the piece. And Elizabeth was really instrumental in wanting to pull that all together and having um, our family be there to help bring this piece to life. What's a beautiful thing is we have an award-winning director behind this project because I see it on Instagram and social all the time, some of the accolades you're getting. Can you tell listeners what some of those projects were? We did a music video with Snoop Dogg and See True. We've won quite a few awards with it. It's called California Party. And I think it's we've won a lot of awards because it's it's about diversity. And I love in no matter what projects I'm doing, like uh, next month I'll be going to Indonesia also uh, to direct a feature film. As a filmmaker, you need to bring awareness. You need to bring diversity that people visually understand, no matter if it's good, bad, sad, or happy, that people understand what humans are going through in their daily life. That's what we're trying to bring to this film, that people understand what teenagers and what, not even teenagers, I mean, you get it as a child or as an adult. I went to one of your events a couple of weeks ago and I spoke to other people and I met this wonderful woman. I mean, she was, I think, in her 40s or 50s and she just discovered a couple of years ago that she had PH. That's why I love working with organizations and I want to bring awareness, no matter if it's music or film. Well, speaking of music, many of the music tracks in this film are attributed to yourself. And maybe tell us a little bit about your past in music, Elizabeth. My first love to the art world still is music. And um, I'm a singer-songwriter. I got uh, signed when I was 18 years old with BMG in Germany. I've released five albums. I've toured around the world with Lenny Kravitz, Deep Purple, performed with Brian May, Simple Minds, many, many artists. I was very fortunate and sold a lot of albums. And I was living in London and I came to the United States through Universal Music. I was always a passionate filmmaker through my music, developing music videos. You know, suddenly bands came up to me and said, hey, um, and record companies, hey, could you direct our music video? And that's how I started into the film. And ever since then, I just love being a part in the film world as well. I think another cool piece, at least for me, is uh, many of the artists and collaborators we've been working with since the inception of PH Aware and even earlier, whether it be graphics designers or uh, sound people and editors, uh, have been involved uh, in this project, which we're very excited about. Mm -hmm. It's lovely to see the evolution of that. And to that end, when we were cutting this together, Elizabeth was always mindful of saying, do we understand pH? Because we want the viewer to really connect with that. So the very first thing you see was some facts about the disease. And while we were doing that, we're like, well, let's get more patient voices involved. And something that I'm personally really thrilled that we have in there is many years ago, I made a series of PSAs with a number of uh, pediatric children, raising awareness of pH, specifically in pediatric patients. And uh, my son, Lucas, who is a voice actor in his own right, and a number of other kids were cited in that, uh, whether it be our partner, Sonny and Hess, Maddie Bonpin, who was the first patient I ever met as she was six months old, Joel Belt, and a couple other patients. So we tracked all these patients down and used those kids, young adults now, to voice these facts to really kind of ground this as you launch into this right. movie. It was a team collaboration community 
project. So I'm just thrilled how it's come together. It doesn't matter if it's music or film, there's always a collaboration between many, many people. It's just not... I directed or I produced it. No, it's a collaboration on this project up to 100 people. But it's just the key to success is to have just a great team. And I'm so lucky to have PH Aware where, you know, you guys were always behind our back. And uh, I couldn't have done it this project without you guys as well because I just needed fact and the personal touch of each and one of you, you know, you've lost a child and I know Steve has a child with PH and John has a PH child who just had a lung transplant. So it was a very educational experience for me and very heartwarming. I think it's really important to note the idea of collaboration and the importance of collaboration because as I said, my children and I were on location and I can't even count the number of times Elizabeth and or Peter would come to me and say, is this accurate? Is this what you would be seeing in a pH patient? And knowing that I had lived for 13 and a half years with Chloe being a patient, and it was really important to both Elizabeth and Peter that they were collaborating at all times, making sure that was what was happening was accurate. And in post-production, it got elevated to a different level. It was agreed upon early on that this was a collaborative process. That's what we needed to do. We needed to work together. And thankfully, we did that and came up with a really good product using the talents and skills of a lot of really creative people and people who are super passionate about this project. Steve being one of them, as Elizabeth said, his son Lucas um, has PH. And Steve's background is he works in the industry and has for a very long time. And I watched as I was kind of there on location. And then what happened afterwards was Steve picking everything up with Elizabeth and Peter and moving forward with it in a way to produce something really spectacular. Yeah, I'm more of a post-production person. So I loved the idea when we would play around with scenes and, hey, where can we move this? And we move this around and we would talk about different ways to, to get into something and get out of something and how to reveal certain points. So that was great. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. One thing I want to note... Uh, tragically, is uh, a person who was an actor in the film who just recently passed. And and maybe, Elizabeth, if you want to talk about that, because you cast him, and I just wanted to, to make sure we give a shout-out about that. Yes, unfortunately, uh, Clement von Frankenstein, our Dr. Brooks, uh, passed away last week. He had a heart attack. He was a huge fan of this project and it was very it went very close to him especially working with teams and um, just listening to all the stories listening to you know on set I know Marie was always talking to Clement as well he took it very personal um, his role you know I know that he was very sick he had diabetes and he had heart problems and for him he said to me that He is so thankful to do this and be a part of this project and to bring awareness. And um, Clement, thank you so much. I'm sure you're listening wherever you are. And thank you so much for uh, bringing this amazing performance you gave us. So everybody will see it on the silver screen. And um, yeah, it was amazing. Actually, very heartbroken at that uh, he's not here, but uh, I went to the hospital. Uh, he was in a coma, and I went to the hospital to see him, and I played his scene so he could see it before he passed away. We did a screening of this with an industry partner. The intent was to get feedback, and the feedback was, well, it was both enormously helpful to us and extremely insightful. As I listened to the responses of people, Um, and I happened to be in the room during the viewing, they were very taken aback. It was jarring to them to see it be portrayed with such realness. And more so than they imagined a pulmonary hypertension patient may be feeling. And as the piece progresses, there's a shift in which it, towards the end, it becomes somewhat lighter. And their response was, 
that, and I think this is a really important thing, it's often necessary to push the viewer to the point of some discomfort so that they really feel the sensation of what's happening. And then as you bring the piece around, you lighten it so that they don't have to feel that pressure for too long. And yet there is literally pulmonary hypertension is about pressure. It's about elevated pressures in the lungs. And so as they were explaining to me that they were feeling this pressure of like being pushed upon because it was it was difficult to watch in regard to that's really what um, a pH patient is feeling. I thought, well, mm -hmm. we captured that's exactly what we were trying to capture. You're trying to give them the sensation of, in essence, taking your breath away in a different way than what happens to our patients, but still taking their breath away. And we got amazing feedback that 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 worked really beautifully. This was was a uh, industry crowd that works in the pulmonary hypertension space, mind you. So uh, this is the people that are on the front lines every day with clinical trials and, and the pharmaceutical front. So uh, it was interesting. Some of the comments of like they motivated them to work harder in the work that they're doing on behalf of these patients at the same time. Still, even though it was this discomfort, we still have a comedic relief, which is important because. Not everything in life is bad. I always say life is a complicated comedy. So it sounds very dark, but through PH and what you guys are doing as an organization, and, I, and me talking to just some of your patients um, at that event, they feel they're not alone. You know, they have a community to reach out. Who could help who? Uh, what doctors? That was, for me, very uplifting and to see all this and what you guys are doing. It's, it's amazing. What's interesting with the piece as well is there's a multitude of characters that are all suffering from this disorder and they are all masking it in different ways or hiding it in different ways. And they're keeping it internalized. And one, you might be outwardly angry about it or might be outwardly pessimistic about it or whatever. We all have these masks that we're putting on too. So I, I think that was executed well by the actors. It was executed well in the edit, on uh, the direction rather. We're just happy to take a new trajectory out there on the advocacy and awareness front and hopefully uh, enlighten more people about pH. As it is with any creative effort when you work this hard on something together. As Elizabeth said, she's learned so much about pulmonary hypertension. She's met patients. She's met caregivers. She, she went into a whole world that she had never seen before and has really attached herself to this. So that's the brilliance of working in this industry is that when we all work together and collaborate the way that we did, we really facilitate change. And that was our effort here. What I get from this, hopefully, and I hope you both agree, is there's no shortage of stories to tell, whether it be in a podcast or whether it be uh, on the on the uh, the big screen. So uh, we'll endeavor to uh, to tell more intricate stories about this rare disease uh, that impacts uh, so many people around the world. I don't know if everybody knows that three and a half years ago or so, you came up with the idea of this podcast series. You came to John and me and said. I have this idea and I'd like to give it a try. We are now on the 250th episode of a podcast series that literally was a glimmer in your eye. And it now mm. downloads somewhere between 10 and 20,000 downloads per month on every platform that exists. And so we spend a great deal of time. This particular piece, this other creative thing that we have done together, that we chosen content together, and we've spoken about which physicians or which patients or whatever we've done to work on this together, you have then taken that with another team of people that nobody knows is really behind the scenes, which have been longtime coworkers of yours and friends of yours that help us create this every day. And we are getting the message out on a broad scale about pulmonary hypertension in a way that has never been done before globally. And um, I hope that everybody knows the amount of work that you put into making that happen every day, because I'm not sure people do. I'm, and I'm also not sure that people understand the number of conferences we go to and how many meetings we attend and how deeply immersed we are in facilitating change because we're kind of in it for the cure. And we always will be. We are always thinking about the patients and um, their quality of life and uh, what's next for them. Marie, Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Marie Rand, and I'm aware that I'm rare. 
I'm Elizabeth White, and I'm aware I'm rare. To learn more about our PH Awareness short film, go to our website at www.phaware.global or follow us on social at phaware. Thank you so much for following us for 250 episodes. We've got so many more stories to tell, so much more medical education and uh, great conversations from all around the world. My name is Steve Van Warmer, and I'm aware that I'm rare. Mm -hmm.